Hi, and welcome to week nine. This week you have a mini assignment uh, due on Wednesday, and then we're going to look at paragraphs and infographics. Um, so to start, I'm going to skip over the Wednesday, and I'm going to go into making paragraphs, and then we'll come back to it. So paragraphs do not occur in nature, whereas sentences and grammar are grammatical units intrinsic to the spoken language, perhaps, <laughs> my goodness, I'm sorry. Whereas sentences are grammatical units intrinsic to the spoken language, paragraphs are literary convention designed to divide masses of context into appetizing portions, okay? I want you to read through this whole thing, but if you think about it, paragraphs, we have to have a large amount of text on the page. People get, uh, you know, kind of scared or bored or whatever when we have large portions of text. So we need to make it interesting. You know, when we have a period to take a breath in a sentence, we need to think about how we can organize text on a page to give visually appealing text. You know, we've talked about the end of the lines of text, not having one word, you know, our orphans, our widows, all of that. So we're going to be thinking about this in paragraph form. You know, we started off with characters, and then we looked at words, and then we looked at sentences, and now we're looking at paragraphs. We're going to talk about paragraphs and grids more as we go throughout uh, the term, but with our infographic, you may find that you have short paragraphs of text, so you're going to need to think about it in paragraph form. We gotta think about letting. Remember the space between our lines of text. So thinking about all these vocab words and everything that we've talked about previously and how we can use it all moving forward. So there's kind of different indents, different line breaks. You generally do not need to do both. So we don't need to indent and do a, an extra space between paragraphs. It's generally one or the other. Closed and experimental. You know, pick up a couple of books, magazines, anything that you have around your house and see what you like, see what works well. Also pay attention to the font choices that they're using. When we have a lot of text together, we generally need to use a more simplified font so that it's easy to read. Remember our legibility and readability. Back in the day, they used to use large capitals to begin a paragraph of text. So this is in is the first word. It was a kind of a way to be artistic and designy and give attention to this beginning. Uh, today, in large caps are easily stylized, stylized as part of a publication's typographic system. So something like this. Here's some variations. Hierarchy is still going to be super important. We use hierarchy in everything that you do. Whenever you're creating something, before you are done, take a look at it and think, hmm, where do I look first? Where do I look second? Is this what I want the viewer to go through? And then there are variations. You know, in our upcoming assignment, you are going to have six sections, and it's up to you to figure out how you want to organize them. And then experimenting with form. Okay, so take a look through that. Now, before I get to our infographic, I want to go over our midweek assignment. So, um, I think some of you did a really nice job with the art postcard. I think some of you, um, the text wasn't organized well or it wasn't even easy to read. Um, and so I want us to take a look at this kind of again. So I have all of this information here. You can just copy it right from here and we can paste it into Illustrator. What I want you to do is create a 5.5 by 8.5. It is up to you if you want it to be portrait or landscape. So obviously eight and a half by five and a half. Either way, portrait or landscape. And I want you to create five artboards. You can grab our text tool. Oops. Type tool. Paste the text. OK. 
okay? I want you only using text, only thinking about hierarchy, text, and your font choice to create five versions of how this should look. So what do I kind of mean here? Well, if the typography show is our title, is our you know headline, we might want this to be bigger. You don't have to keep this in one text block. Um, so you know you may want to have you know the date and location in another text box. You can organize this however you want, but I need you guys to think about hierarchy and your font choices. You know, we can give a theme. Maybe I want this to look like something in particular. That is great. Then we need to find something that complements it really well to have with our, um, you know, our uh, complementing text. Okay, you can have a similar hierarchy in all of them, but I want different font choices for all of them. I would recommend that you play around with hierarchy so they're not all the same, but you will save this out as a PDF, and then in the comments of the submission, I want you to tell me which one of the five is the most successful and why. Okay, we really need to push that you're retaining the information that we're talking about each week. And most of you are, and that's totally fine. And if you aren't, that's fine too. I just want to make sure that we're understanding why, right? And if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm here, jfuller at sxu.edu. Email me whenever you want. But I want us to push these ideas. Okay, a lot of times with typography, I create artboards like this and, and swap out font choices. You know, it's one thing to go, okay, well, that's pretty condensed. I like that though, but mm, okay. That one, you know, we've got some serifs, okay. It's a different thing to be able to look at them and compare and contrast next to each other to see what you actually like and what looks better and why. Okay, the why is the kind of the most important here, right? If you can't explain why, you know, this is better than this one, well, you know, this is a postcard, so it's going to be smaller. Even just looking at these as a distance, this has such a thick to thin weight that the line almost disappears, and then with the ball serif, that becomes very difficult to read for my SXU. Maybe it could be okay for typography. Show, this looks like a U at the end. Um, and, you know, what am I trying to say with my typography show? What am, you know, what kind of a mood am I trying to give off? This is, it, this is simplified, yes. Maybe it's not giving me a strong feeling towards the show, but at least this is easy to read and I can probably find a nice compliment for that font choice. Okay, so I want you to think about these things and then write, you know, option number two works best because of X, Y, and Z. If you look at four and five, you'll find this. So I need a paragraph as well. If you do not have the paragraph, I'm going to give you a zero on the assignment. So I need to see that you have the five and the paragraph submitted. Okay, and let me know if you have any questions on any of that. Then we'll go to your infographic. And I specifically did it on this video. I try to make the videos concise, interesting, and fun, um, but I know some of you haven't been watching, so please start watching these. Um, infographics, and I know a lot of you are watching. Great work. Thanks for keeping up. So, infographics. Um, Infographics are a great way to give some data-based information in a new and interesting way. So, chart, diagram, or illustration that uses graphic elements to present information in a vis visually striking way. Okay, nine tips. You need a great headline. Create for your target audience. Don't overload with graphics or text. Make sure you have um, plenty of white space, aka negative space. Cite your sources. You must, must, must. Let me say it again. Must cite your sources. If you do not have sources cited on your infographic, I'm going to give it a zero. 
Um, so you can kind of go through this to read through that even further. Create your infographic for your target audience. This is going to be obviously an informative piece, so you already are going to know it's going to be people that either need to know this information or are interested in this information. So you can really reach them easily. Keep it simple. If you're going to have a lot of information, you're going to have graphics, so you need to kind of simplify it as much as possible. Keep it focused. Think about what your statistics are, why they are important, and focus on those. Show things visually. Again, this is typography and we're dealing with words and written information, but we want to navigate our viewer through it and tell them why this is exciting and the visuals really help to do that. Make it easy to view, manageable size and length, add white space, so you'll see when you go through these, some of these work better than others. Okay. And you'll notice a lot of these have different levels of text and graphics. So I would kind of do some research, you know, what infographics are out there, what makes them successful, what do you personally like? And then um, just some inspirational ones. So I'm leaving it wide open as to what the topic is. You can really make it up. Um, if you wanted to do something specific to you, you could. Um, I've had people do um, kind of topics that are facing the world right now or things that they think people need to know more information about. You could think of, uh, I'm not even going to say, I'm going to leave it wide open. So find a topic that is interesting to you. Get a minimum of six facts that represent the topic. Make sure you are citing your sources and checking your facts. I have seen people do medical ones and they didn't double check the facts and the sources that they got were wrong. So just make sure you are checking your facts and of course citing your sources. Research what infographics are and what makes one more successful than others. Think about your font choices, color, layout, grid, hierarchy, and spacing. Again, we're going to talk more about grid in the future, but think about how it's laid out. That's really dealing with your composition. Create five sketches of your idea. Bring your favorite and most successful one into Illustrator and finalize it. Your final will be 11 by 17 or 17 by 11. So up to you if you want portrait or landscape. PDF and sketches are due Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Again, think about your entire composition. I need to see you using the principles and elements of design and that you are refining your work. I would love for this to be a portfolio piece for you. It's a great way to show off graphic design, typography, composition, all of these principles, everything that you've working, been working towards in your career here at St. Xavier. So show me everything you've got in this assignment. Okay? Do Sunday. Let me know if you have any questions, and I look forward to seeing your work.